Hello, thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna share this on social media and we shall get started shortly. So thank you very much for tuning in. Twitter, uh, Facebook, personal Facebook, and I think we are on uh, Facebook. All right, so I already did a satellite ground station video one on the background. I just did one a few minutes ago on the, uh, the buying of the stuff. And now I'm gonna do a video on what I did today and some of the things that have happened since my last update. So basically I've got a lot of videos for you here. So the first thing I did today is I measured the roof. Here, this is the first time I've been on the roof. My buddy's down there holding the ladder for me. And um, I came up here to measure the length from the edge of the roof to the top of the roof so I know how to estimate how much coaxial cable I need to get to the antennas. So it's about 20 feet. It's a test. 19 feet and approximately six inches. So that's about north. So, unfortunately, that means where all these trees are is west, but they're not terribly covered, so it'll be all right. So there's south, and um, but look how much, there's a good bit of sky right here, really good bit of sky, so there's east, southeast. I, got, I, I do have this here, but actually, as I can see that this is going to be I was worried about that, but the antennas are going to be a little bit above that, approximately, so that's no big deal. I'll put the antenna further. I'll put the antenna um, further over here because my apartment or my window is um, basically the coax will will come out of the window in, in the room that's right about there, and that's going to be over there somewhere. So the antennas will actually be over here. So and there's a uh, down to where I usually park my car. It's not my car, neighbors, but um. So yeah, north, and uh, I think I might put a dipole in these trees at some point, or an off-center fed dipole. That'd be cool if I could put 80 meter dipole up there. It's not two trees though, it's several trees. Okay, I'm gonna go back down now. Okay, so uh, the next thing I wanna show you is the attic. This is how my buddy Sammy did his attic. I helped him install a tripod. If you watched the first video, you know that. So he got some plywood and screwed it into the top of the, uh, the, the roof from the inside of the attic. And the reason I'm showing you this now is because in the next video, I describe it differently than how he did it because I had forgotten. So I actually describe it as putting it on the, on the, um, on the uh, beams here in the next video, but that's not what he did, and I'll probably do what he did instead, actually. Okay, I'm here in my attic, I'm trying to figure out where to put some panels. So basically, the way this is gonna work is that's the apex of the roof. So the tripod has three feet, and so I'm gonna have one foot over here, uh, one foot on the other side of that beam there, and then the third foot will be over here, and I've kind of marked generally where I think it's going to be. So there's one, and there's a circle there, and then it's going to be over here for the last one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some plywood, and I'm going to attach it to these beams here, and I'm going to have a big bolt come through the roof, and then I'll have a washer on the other side of the plywood and some nuts, and that's how I'm going to secure the... Uh, tripod to the roof so there's gonna be a panel here I'm gonna to have to cut a panel over here I'm gonna to have to cut and screw into the beams and then a third one will be which right here and this is what I learned from my friend he did the same thing so that's what I'm gonna do okay so that's that here's uh, the next thing I want to show you this is an amazing piece of aluminum look how big that is this is the mast <laughs> that's cool 1.75 inches, um, 0.25 inch, uh, quarter inch thick, 0.56 outside diameter. That's the tripod it's going to go in, and this tripod 
holds up to two inch outside diameter. Actually, this is not the one I ordered. They gave me a better one than what I ordered. And if I had known this had existed, I would have bought this anyway. The one I ordered actually was only gonna have one brace, but this one has two. And they're the same height, but this one holds a bigger um, mast. However, I don't think, I don't know if that one handles up to two inch mast, but um, it definitely handles 1.75, so it'll be fine. All right, and here is me after I assembled it. Here's the, here is the Yezu G5500 on top of the five foot aluminum mast mounted onto the five foot tripod. And these are some rotator cables, as L, as L. They're only 25 feet. I got this from Matthew in J4Y. I got this from Matthew with the rotator and a lot of other stuff uh, like the LVB tracker and. So that's, it's not like I bought these specifically from him for my use case. He just already had them, so I got it all together. I need them longer, so I'm going to have to get longer cables and redo the uh, connectors and such. But this is pretty darn cool. I am really getting excited. When I got this on here and pushed it up and stood back, I was like, wow, this is going to be amazing. This thing's really solid. I'm really excited. This tripod is not the one I ordered. It's actually more sturdy than the one I ordered. The one I ordered only had one sight, and it can handle a two inch, um, or maybe a over two inch. It handles a bigger mat. I'm really excited. This tripod is not the one I ordered. It's actually more sturdy than the one I ordered. The one I ordered. Yeah, so I just wanted to point that out again. The one I ordered originally just had the one section there, and this one has two, so it's sturdier. Ordered only had one over two inch and handles a bigger mass than the other. Known this one was bad. Happy to have a. <laughs> In fact, if I had known this one was available, I would have gotten this one instead. I didn't realize that this was available. So, happy to have a more sturdy tripod. Now, I won't be using this. This is a part of a, a cross boom that Matt sold me. Um, it has two fiberglass sections for either side that screw, um, that slide over these, this piece here, this aluminum piece here. Um, the M2 antenna, which I bought, which is here, the M2 Leopack includes its own, um, cross boom. So I'll be using that, um, if I can't, if I don't have any other, the only other thing I might use the fiberglass one for is if, it makes more sense because it's a lot bigger than that one will be. And I do have this 1.2. Let me clarify that. The uh, cross boom that I got from Matt is a lot longer than the cross boom that the M2 antenna has. And that one will be. And I do have this 1.2 gigahertz antenna, so it might make much more sense to use um, a longer cross boom so I can have more distance between the two different antennas. So that's, uh, that's that. You've already seen that. Here's the helical antenna. All right, the next thing I want to show you is the preamps. So this is the two meter preamp I bought for the Aris Contact in February of 2018. And that's the stuff it came with. And this is the 70 centimeter equivalent that I just bought. You can see it says 432 there. And here it says uh, 144. So that's how you can tell the difference, but otherwise it's exactly the same. And the 160 means it can handle 160 watts, and it can uh, take its RF switch um, up to 160 watts. So these things are great. It's cool when it's um, when you power it, you can hear a relay inside of it click on. It's pretty cool to hear it. I'm excited. So this is brand new, never open as you can see, it's still in the bag. Hi hey Carl, thanks for tuning in. Uh, the pitch pads, here are the pitch pads. So this is, uh, let's see. <clears throat> so this is the, I ordered, uh, let's see. These are the pitch pads, that's what it looks like in their picture, obviously it's not the same as that. What I got looks like this. I'm not going to be using those screws. I'm going to be using bolts and I'm the thing I just showed you earlier. But this is what I wanted from this uh, this part product is these little tar 
pads you put them between the feet and the roof and that basically seals the roof so other people are telling me to use different things or more things but my buddy he used this and it lasted he's two years later has no leaks whatsoever so i'm going to at the very least use this i might cover with more so that's pretty much it um yeah i don't know what else to say i got i think i showed you all the videos i wanted to show you um there are some other ones but uh Cool. Okay. Well, this was shorter than I expected it to be. So thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, wherever. Bye y'all. 73. I'm John Breyer, KG4AKB.